bro. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, man? Good, alhamdulillah. So good to have you in Oklahoma. It's been a minute. What is it that you, Khalid Beydoun, want to be known for? Yeah. I, you know, for a number of things. I think that, you know, first and foremost, I'm a law professor. I teach law, constitutional law. Second, um, publicly speaking, I think I'm most recognized for my work on Islamophobia in the United States, but also, you know, what's happening globally. And I think third, young people uh, might gravitate toward me because I use social media as a instrument to, to educate them on issues concerning law, social justice, and also Islamophobia. So let's talk about, you know, some of the work you've done on Islamophobia. Your first book, American Islamophobia, really zeroing in on the impact of anti-Muslim hate in our country. And your newest book, looking at it on a global, more broad scale. What are the key takeaways that you have learned from doing these two books? So we're obviously in the United States, we're both American, and I think one of the key takeaways is to understand that although Islamophobia globally might look different in places like China mm. or India, France or Sweden, that one thing that sort of like holds it all together was that it was an American project spearheaded by the war on terror, wow. right? From Washington, D.C., the sort of like core stereotypes that associated Islam with extremism, violence, was being exported to all these countries, globally speaking, to legitimize their campaigns against their host Muslim populations. Mm -hmm. And then second, to intensify the violence that we see taking place. Wow. So uh, th that is a core baseline that obviously that I want, you know, us as Americans to be very focal of. Mm -hmm. I think the question on many individuals' minds, and I've had people ask me this, is does Islamophobia still exist? Yeah. And the reason this question, I think, is being asked is that Trump is no longer in office. Yeah. Uh, we're no longer hearing about anti-Sharia laws and controversies surrounding building mosques and so on and so forth. So things have quieted down in some ways. In your opinion, if someone were to ask you, does Islamophobia still exist in America, how would you respond? Well, first of all, I think it's it definitely still exists. Um, the way I'd respond to that would be threefold, right? I think it's important for us, specifically as Muslims, to be global citizens, right? We believe in Oma, we believe in this transnational community. And if we look beyond American borders, you see what's happening in China with mm -hmm. concentration camps for the Uyghur Muslims. We see what's happening in India, Rohingya Muslims. So Islamophobia, even though one might say it's been paused uh, or mooted here in the United States, it's definitely inclining and being pronounced globally speaking. My second response to that is to, uh, is to, to kind of think about Islamophobia in the same way that we think about racism, right? So we know that during moments of modern American history, that explicit racism, outward racism might decline, right, right? right? But it can be triggered and intensified very easily. So if a candidate like DeSantis or Trump gains a lot of popularity and begins to engage in that, exp that explicit Islamophobic rhetoric, then we right. see it uh, you know, escalating again. So I wouldn't say it's um, gone. Mm. I, th I think it's kind of more on pause and hidden. It still exists. Sure. Yeah. If you were to give just a few simple examples of how your everyday Muslim mm -hmm. combat Islamophobia, what would they be? I think first to be informed, right? To see, to be informed as to what Islamophobia actually is, uh, not only by way of hate mongering, mm -hmm. bigotry, but also by way of policy, right? right. So you, you were talking about hidden Islamophobia. One might call it liberal Islamophobia. During the Trump administration and now during the Biden administration, Islamophobia still exists, but it's being advanced by way of policy. So we have to understand how Islamophobia is structural uh, and driven by law and policy. A second tip, I think, would be uh, to realize that if it's not us as Muslims to educate the broader community and public about what Islamophobia actually is, then nobody's going to do it. I hear young people, like young activists, oftentimes say that it's not my responsibility to like mm -hmm. teach that person or that person about what Islam is and who Muslims are. But the reality is, is if it's not us who's going to do it, we can't rely on uh, the government or the me definitely not the media, right. the media politicians to do it. So second, to take that responsibility on and be proactive about it. Uh, I think a third thing to do would be um, to support our institutions, right? Mm -hmm. So individuals, activists, uh, you know, come and go. Right. But one thing we learned from other uh, minority institutions is that they've been very successful, uh, communities, they've been very successful in establishing strong institutions. Right. So we have to kind of, we have to invest, donate, mm. and put our money where our mouth is to make sure we have strong institutions in the long term.
I agree. Build community infrastructure. Exactly. And I think that's that's a, a really important point is that we build mosques, we built Islamic schools, we built organizations that give back charitable contributions like medical clinics, free medical yeah. clinics. But we need those organizations that can focus on strategy, civil liberties, government affairs, and so on to really strengthen the Muslim communities. That's a good point. I think that's a great uh, ending point for this conversation. Question, though, for you coming from Detroit is, are you a Pistons fan? Die hard. Well, <laughs> you know, if the Pistons... We've been struggling, though, these last couple years. We have been struggling, but, you know, you got a few championships. we got an Oklahoman. Though. we got a kid from uh, OSU. There you go. Well, Kate Cunningham. Hey, okay, then. All right. That's, <laughs> you know, you got an Okie with you, so you <laughs> you, you're on the right path. Inshallah. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. You too, likewise. Thanks All for right. having me.